welcome back to our Christmas series. So, how many of you love to sing Christmas songs? And how many of you know that Christmas brings up some pretty strange words? Think about some of the things that we sing about. Yuletide logs, glad tidings, figgy pudding. But then there are other words that we're familiar with. Words that feel a little more special this time of year. Words like joy, peace, and love. Today we're talking about one of those words. It is a powerful and incredible word, hope. We all know the feeling of hope, but most of us would probably have a hard time describing it. You may have hoped for things like this in your life. Maybe you've hoped for meeting a group of friends who you feel like you belong with and are accepted by. Maybe you've hoped for a good grade in math class. Maybe you've hoped uh, to see your parents get back together or, or just for them to not fight so much. Maybe you've hoped for a family member getting better after a serious health scare. Maybe you've hoped for the world to look different than it looks right now. We're told that it's good to have hope, but it's a tricky word. Is, is there a difference between wishing for something and hoping for it? What are the things that we can hope for? Like, can we hope for a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Or can we only hope for important stuff like world peace? Some of you may have a lot going on right now, so it's tough to think about the future and things that you're hoping for later. Maybe the idea of hope makes you feel sad because it's just a reminder of all the things in your life that aren't going right right now. Maybe hope seems pointless because if God is in control, isn't he gonna just do what he wants to do? We feel like our hope isn't going to change anything. No matter what your feelings are on the idea of hope, the question is, why do we have it? Why is hope even a thing? And how did this word get to be so related to Christmas? You could define hope a lot of different ways, but we'll do it this way. Hope is the true belief that your future can be better than your now and that you have a role to play in it. Hoping and wishing is like this. When you look at a tree and you say, I wish it were decorated, nothing happens. When we have hope and expectation that things can look different, we get involved in making the change that we want to see. Where wishing waits, hope hunts opportunity to get involved. Hope looks like seeking out opportunities to make things look better, and hope finds a role to play. The thing that makes hope different from wishing is that hope asks something of us. When you make a wish, that's literally all you do. You make it, and then you just wait to see what happens, but hope is different. Hope isn't just about sitting around and waiting for something to happen. Hope is wanting something to happen and then participating in the process. It's active, it's involved. It's something that can change you and maybe even inspire you to act. We're gonna look at a book of the Bible called Jeremiah, named after a prophet with the same name. A prophet was somebody whose job was to hear from God back then and then pass those messages along to God's people. And at that time, Jeremiah was a prophet. The kingdom of Israel was divided into two parts, a northern kingdom of Israel and a southern kingdom named Judah. Jeremiah was a prophet of Judah, the southern kingdom. And during Jeremiah's reign, the city of Jerusalem had been captured by the Babylonian empire. And many of the people were taken into exile to live in Babylon. It was a really, really difficult time for people of Judah. They felt hopeless. And in the midst of that, Jeremiah speaks up. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Jeremiah 33, 14 through 16. When he said from David's line, the David he's talking about was David, the most famous king Israel ever had. He ruled when the kingdoms were actually united, not divided. So basically Jeremiah is saying, don't give up hope. There will be a time when we'll be back home. We won't be here forever. You're being held captive by a foreign empire that doesn't believe in God, but there will be a time when an even better king will come from a family here and rule like a good and righteous king. In other words, it's the start of better things. It feels bad now, but it won't be this way forever. Jeremiah was speaking for God, and that was what made his message trustworthy. 
That was what made his message something that people could put their hope in. It wasn't wishful thinking. It was hope filled believing because of who the message was coming from, the God that they can count on. In other words, the thing that makes hope possible isn't how badly we want it or how positive the outcome is that we're hoping for. The thing that makes hope possible is the who behind the hope. The people of Judah could trust the message from Jeremiah because it was a message from a God that they trusted. They knew God's character, they believed God was looking out for them, and they knew that they could count on God's goodness to be real, even when their circumstances were far from good. When you have hope in the one making the promise, you can have hope in the promise itself. And that's what the people of Judah were doing. This passage, this promise, was made to specific people at a specific time. And this was only the beginning. The future leader that Jeremiah was talking about was Jesus. God was giving the people of Judah a person to hope in for their future. And while these promises are directed towards people who lived thousands of years ago, there are promises in other parts of scripture that we can count on for ourselves. God promises to guide us in Psalm 48, 14. God promises to love us no matter what in Isaiah 54, 10. God promises to be faithful to us, 2 Timothy 2, 13. God promises us wisdom in James 1, 5. God promises us peace in John 14, 27. And God promises that we belong to him as our heavenly father in Romans 8, 15. The truth is God's promises are all over scripture and we don't trust them because they sound good or nice or sound like something that we wish to be true. We trust these promises because of the one who is making them. God is trustworthy. We can put our hope in and count on God. And that's important for us to keep in mind because that means that we can take God's promises seriously and really believe in them. And that's the start of better things. So what would it look like to believe in God's promises today? Let's start by asking some questions. First, who or what has your hope? Are you more hopeful for a specific outcome you want or is your hope in God? What would it look like to have your hope in God instead? Remember, wishing is simply wanting something to happen, but hope asks for our participation. It asks for us to be a part of the process. Hoping in God means actively trusting in God who is and, and what God says. It means asking God what role you and I can play in bringing hope to the situations that we wish were different. It means we look at God's word and promises and we count on those things being true. For instance, if you wanna make more of an impact, sign up to serve in the children's area here at church. Do you want school uh, to have less bullying and drama? Then be the person who stops gossip and start including everyone. Think of it this way, where there is not hope, bring it. You and I can be a part of bringing hope to the world this Christmas season. We can be active participants in making the world a better place. We can be the change that we want to see in our future. We can trust God because of what we know to be true of the God in the person of Jesus. Jesus's arrival changed everything. Jesus arriving was hope fulfilled. And that means that because of Jesus, there is always hope no matter what we face.